This is I, the artist, the creative, conscious being. I think self-discovery doesn't happen. I think it just carries on and on. I might have discovered as a child that I loved to draw or paint. I might have discovered as a, a teenager that I loved to travel. I might have discovered in my 30s that I am actually quite maternal and had children, which I never thought I would. So you carry on discovering, but I don't think you ever finish the journey and get to the place you are going to be. The world is an amazing place. I think that's what it triggers. I mean, I, I started traveling well, gosh, when I was 17, 18, and, you know, the world is a big world, I'd have quite a small world till then, because you do as a, as a child. And I looked at a map of Europe and worked out how far I could get by train. What was the furthest point I could get by train? Because I, that was all the money I had was for a train fare. You know, we couldn't afford flights. Early 80s, flights were expensive. And Finland was where I decided I was going to go and uh, so I managed to get a job as an au pair in Finland after I left school. So I mean it started, my love affair of new places started then. After I finished uni I ended up um, working in South Africa for a year uh, doing some voluntary work out there and then I travelled more sort of in my 20s, um, in my late 20s I got made redundant from a job and ended up travelling for a year and a half through Asia and sort of Latin America. So when I was in South Africa, I ended up doing quite a lot of sort of design stuff. I was working with some, some anti-apartheid groups and ended up doing some sort of design work. It's a very proud moment. I have a picture of Desmond Tutu standing in front of one of my designs. And when I was travelling, I usually ended up with, yes, pencil and paper in hand. So I, I've been to the Galapagos Islands and sat and, and drew giant tortoises at the Darwin Centre. And I still have such a strong memory of sitting drawing these giant tortoises and one coming up behind me and starting to chew my shoulder. Then when I, I travelled through Indonesia, I spent three months sort of going from island to island in Indonesia. A few years ago, when there was an eclipse in North America, I was talking probably online to someone I know, and they were talking about the path of totality, which was the area where which would go pitch black. It was a full eclipse. And I just love that phrase, the path of totality, I thought was amazing. And that's what made me decide to actually pursue art full time. Because until then, I was sort of doing some writing, some painting, a little bit of teaching, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I wasn't committed to anything. So that phrase just hit me between the eyes the path of totality and at the time I was freelancing I was doing some freelance writing and I sacked my clients overnight and thought if now if not now when so that was a really significant moment for me in my my journey to become a an artist It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> you don't often get to, to sack your clients as a, a freelancer and it was just, as I say, you, you can live with regrets otherwise and I don't think that's a way to live life so um, the, I decided to follow the path of totality. So this sketchbook is just from a day I spent sketching in Orvieto uh, and, and I had a day and I wanted to document the whole whole day and the lovely thing is even though these were all 10-15 minute sketches is that you know for example I was sitting here or standing in the middle of, of the lane and there was a most wonderful waft of fried onion smell coming out of one of these houses and there was 
the sounds of cooking and there was opera music in the background i think it was probably just on the radio and 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 i have all those memories and sensations from from that day just looking at that painting because i was there i was there fully and i oh when i sat here as oh, and the sky was not yellow it didn't matter i only had a few colors with me but a guy sat down next to me um and he had a fan and i i mean i wrote it there but i remember it because say you're you're fully in the present when you're drawing and you know these aren't fantastic pieces and it doesn't matter because it's for me and it's yeah it's got just just the memory of the place oh that was when i was having my lunch and it was a jolly fine lunch too <laughs> um so the joy of sort of sketchbooks is that it's so much more than a snap on a camera because every painting every sketch even every doodle has a little bit of you in it i think a big part of creativity is is problem solving and i'd say to people that a big part of our, our role as artists is to question and to wonder what happens if or i want to do this or i want to express this or create this i don't know how but i wonder what would happen if um, so that sort of questioning and inquiring mind I think is really important for pushing beyond what happens now. You know, I, I want to capture whatever the subject is or the emotion or express this. Never done this before. I wonder if I could do this. I wonder if I could do that. Or you try something, it doesn't work. Or your materials don't coalesce and they repel each other. So you say, what happens if? How can I do this? Um, so I have a background as a scientist. I, I was good at science. My, my degree is science, is BSc. And I think there's a lot in common of experimenting, having a hypothesis, questioning and turning things around and then creating. Um, and, and I just think that's really important. Uh, and again, coming back to the teaching, I hope what I do is help people ask that question. I don't want to teach people to paint like me because I paint like me, you should paint like you. Um, I want people to have that sort of sense of wonder and questioning and finding what gets them excited and also, what's the worst that can happen? You do something, it doesn't work. Well, you've still learned something. So that's that's a sort of spirit that I want to bring to my work and to encourage other people. It doesn't always work, though. <laughs> Some people like to be spoon-fed. <laughs> and about your books... Um... We know the act of writing or simply using pen and paper stimulates our brain and help us as well as uh, the readers. Uh, what do you think? I think my, my art has developed and things like my teaching has really developed because I do a lot of teaching now. My writing and some of my sort of past experience has come together and, and my fifth book is just about to be published. And I, I want my books to be splashed with paint. It's like a clean cookery book is ridiculous. A, a clean art book is meant, it, it means it hasn't worked, it hasn't been used, it hasn't inspired anyone. You know, I want it to be splashed with paint and the pages stuck together and the so the spine creased and you know that's that's a sign that it's actually been loved and used the the thing that you have to you're teaching people to draw and the thing you have to really help them do is is overcome their prejudices and overcome the shorthands that we have in our brains because we have those shorthands 
in our brains to help us make sense of the world. You know, we know what a tree looks like, we know what a face looks like, we know what a cow looks like. And you have to teach them to really look and see rather than assume. And particularly with faces, and, and people put ears in strange places, they end up looking like Shrek because ears always end up here because they're really not important and people plonk them anywhere. And then, or eyes come out huge in people's drawings because they are important to us. So we make them three times the size that they actually are. But when you look and draw and see and really see the world as it is, that's when it all starts to click into place. And if you're teaching someone to draw, the major thing is to help them see rather than assume. Uh, and you say, draw what you see, not what you know. My, well, I, I can remember two really significant presents as a child, one of which was a chemistry set, because mm -hmm. I love mixing potions and lotions and I love science. And the other was a huge, really um, good quality drawing pad. Um, and it seemed huge to me then because you give children horrible paper to draw on and this was lovely. I discovered my absolute adoration of watercolours when I was considerably older. Um, when, when my first son was born, I was quite desperate to go and do something to remember who I was. You know, here I was as a, a mother, but I still was me. And I, I ended up going to an evening class um, and it was watercolours and I fell in love with watercolours. So that wasn't until in my mid thirties. And I really haven't looked back since then. A, a brush has hardly been out of my hands since then, I guess. I have been pleasantly surprised at possibilities. To be able to create and share your love of what you do and what you see in the world is just an amazing privilege. So I count myself incredibly lucky.